Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome back to another Starbase video. Today, we're going to be talking about how to set up your flight controls for your ship, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you do enjoy the video and you want to see more content like this. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need in order to get started here is going to be a beam in order to place our actual cockpit on. So what we're going to do is just to make this nice and simple for us here, we're going to go ahead and place it out like that. We're going to make sure that we have it connected to two beams because that's how beams work. So we're just going to go ahead and put a second beam adjacent to it. Let's go ahead and copy that over. And we'll do the same to the other side so that it's parallel and even on weight. We'll then go ahead and weld the beams down. Make sure we're welding all. And there we go. So now that we've got these welded down, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and set up our pilot's chair. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we type in pilot's chair. Now we're gonna obviously need to build the pilot's chair stand first. This does need to be bolted into something, so do keep that in mind. Although it is very open to what it can be bolted into. You can bolt this into a plate if that's something you prefer to do. It's really just up to how you want to make it. I like to just bolt it right into a beam. It's a little more secure that way, but that's just me. So let's go ahead and bolt this sucker down. We're just going to auto bolt it. And there we go. Now we've got the chair. So we're going to go ahead and put the actual seat into it, which is called the pilot's chair. And once that's in, we're going to also auto bolt that in. Make sure we have the stand selected as well when we do this so that it's bolted together. And now we're going to go ahead and set up our flight controls. Now this part is pretty straightforward. It's really not that complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. First thing we're going to need is a main flight computer. Every single ship will require you to have a main flight computer without exception. There is no way in which you cannot have one of these unless you decide that you want to be magic man and control every single thruster individually which is not going to be fun next we're going to need our flight control unit our basic one here is going to give us a yaw pitch roll forwards and backwards our advanced is going to give us the exact same thing but it will also give us the ability to strafe and that includes going up and down and strafing where the premium is going to give us all of those features, but and then allow us to then combine them, which really isn't necessary. So for us today, we're just gonna be using a flight control unit advanced, just for the sake of this video, it's the one I would recommend you guys use. Now, if you look at this flight control unit, you'll see some arrows on the top of it. These are super duper important as that is going to be the front of your ship. So we wanna make sure we rotate this so that those arrows are pointing towards the front of our ship. That is what decides it. So if your ship isn't functioning right, that could be one of the reasons why. We can bolt this to pretty much anywhere we want. Once again, I could bolt it back here. I could bolt it up here. It doesn't really make a difference. So for me, I'm just gonna bolt it. Let's see, you know what? Yeah, let's just keep it on top of here. That should work perfectly fine. Then we're gonna grab both of these and we're gonna auto bolt those in if they want to work. Let's do it ourselves if the game doesn't wanna listen to us. So why I don't like the auto bolter sometimes. And you know what, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this somewhere else because I don't really like that spot too much. You know, actually, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it up here on the roof. Just because this is a test ship, there's not a lot of space just easier to put it in here so that I don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna slap it right on there. Obviously in a normal ship, you'd wanna protect it and maybe secure it a little better, but for the sake of this video, just to get it down and get it working, that should work perfectly fine. Now that we have that, we need to go ahead and we need to hook up our cabling. So again, this is very simple. All we need to do is make sure the cabling goes directly into the main cable systems. That means it can connect to anywhere on the grid I want it to. As long as it is connected into the grid, we will be good to go. So I can connect it right here, and that is perfectly fine. I do not need to have both sides connected, only one. Same thing is gonna go for this computer down here. We're gonna do the same thing, connect it into the grid, boom, it's good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and wire this up to our 
pilot's chair. And I always like to make sure there's an extra redundancy wire for this because if this gets disconnected, you will not be able to fly and it's gonna cause you a ton of problems. So this is just the easiest way to do it in my personal experience. Now, the next step we're going to need to do is we're going to actually need to build ourselves some controls as the ship will not function unless you actually have controls. I'm usually going to use levers for these. For this one, we're going to be starting out with some very basic systems just to get the ship moving right and making sure that it's working. So we're gonna go ahead and take our lever right here and we're gonna put that down on the actual ship itself. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna copy a couple of these for some different controls we're gonna need here in a minute when we set this up. Again, normally you would probably wanna build yourself a little like area where you can manually control these if you need to. It's just a matter of preference. For the sake of this video, it's not really necessary, so it's perfectly fine. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and bring those into the main cabling system so that they're wired. I'm just gonna run them across here. There is extra panels you can do to kind of just wire the panel itself and then attach everything to it. I like to do it this way. This is just, again, my preference. It's totally up to you. Now, after we've done that, we then need to properly name each one of these things so that way they actually function properly. So in order to do that, you're gonna need to have your properties window open. Now your properties window is going to have something called lever state. We're not gonna mess with anything down here right now because this is just our basic ship. You can change how fast the ship actually moves the levers. You can change how high the lever output can be. You can change a ton of stuff down here. But for the sake of this video, we're only gonna be messing with lever state. So now that we have this lever down here, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the advanced flight control unit. And we're gonna go ahead and start giving different orders and of operation to these different levers down here. So FCU forward, we're gonna go ahead and mouse over that, control C to copy it. There we go. We're gonna go back to our lever. We're gonna paste that in right there, make sure we hit enter. Now that should be our forward momentum lever. Again, we're gonna go through and we're gonna do this for every single one of these things. That way we have all the different controls we could possibly want. Alrighty, now that we've done that, don't forget to bolt down your levers. I did forget to do that earlier, so do just make sure you go back and bolt those suckers down, otherwise they will not function properly. Okay, so now that we're at this stage, we've currently gone ahead and we've set up our base flight controls. The next step is gonna be to name our thrusters. Now, when it comes to naming your thrusters, you have two main options available to you. The first option you have is to simply go ahead and press this button up here called thruster field name tool. We're gonna open that up and we're gonna hit name all device fields. This is going to pre-name everything for us so we don't have to worry about it. This is great if you have a small ship like this, but if you have more than 50 thrusters, the flight computer can actually only have 50 separate controlled flight powering groups. That means 50 groups of thrusters. So if you have more than 50 thrusters on your ship, you're going to need to group them and name them individually. So what we can do is go back here to make sure this worked properly. Let's go ahead and open our properties tab once again, and you'll see that this is called thruster power level two. This is thruster power level one. Thruster power level 17, 19, 12, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. And we can go over here and just make sure these match. Now, again, if I did have more thrusters, let's say I wanted all the ones in the back to fire at the same time, I could call these T1. And then I could call this one, say T1 as well, go over into the flight computer and just change that thruster power level one to the name T1 and they would all function properly. You really don't need to do that again on these smaller ships. It's just a total waste of time. But on the bigger ships where you have lots and lots of thrusters firing, it is very important to know that that is something you can do. 
Now, before we're ready to actually do our test flight, we need to do one last final step, and then we're gonna go ahead and jump into that. And that is going to be looking at the ship's durability. So we're gonna go and choose our durability tool, and we're just gonna click somewhere on the ship. Now you'll notice there's some red objects. This is not good. This is very bad news for us. What this means is anything that is red is currently not bolted properly to the ship and will cause a durability error. That means if I go too fast with it, it could entirely rip that piece off of the ship. So we're gonna go ahead and just add some more bolts in, make sure all those turn green. Sometimes you can just add a few extra bolts here and there. Other times you've gotta go through a whole process that is not fun to deal with. But in our case, I think we might be able to get away with just adding some additional bolts. Let's see what we can do. Okay, and as you guys can see, we now no longer have any red things to worry about. However, if you do see these yellow squares, just know if you're trying to build a warp ship that can go through the warp gate, you cannot have any of these yellow squares. It just means it has a chance of falling off if you have a collision, if you don't have a high enough warp class. It can be a number of different things. It's just letting you know, hey, warning, this could cause issues. You don't have to fix them. The ship will still fly, but if you can, I do recommend dealing with them. It's just not always something to worry about if you're just trying to build something like a station hopper or something that's gonna sit in the safe zone as they can't really rip apart anyways. So anyways, now that we have our ship here, we've got our durability checked, everything looks good. We're seeing the ship warp class here that tells us the ship is functioning and it's considered a ship. We should theoretically be able to go into test flight and actually go forward, so let's give it a shot. So let's go ahead and give this thing a test drive. We're gonna jump on into the pilot seat. Now, I could control each of these levers manually, but I should not have to do that since I powered the pilot seat itself and I should be able to use just default controls. So let's see what happens when we go forward. Okay, we are not getting any forward power. Now this could be due to a number of different issues, so let's go ahead and see what's going on. First thing we're gonna wanna check is we're gonna see if this lever is properly connected. It is, and we can tell because if you look right here, this is all showing that it's actually properly connected. If you see all these things kind of quickly scrolling through, that means that it is connected. So we know that's working. We know it's putting out 100. Let's see if it's telling any of the, the computers over here if it should put out 100. It is, it says FC forward 100. So we now know that's working properly. Now, if we go all the way back here, let's go ahead and check the thruster. So the thruster is not properly connected and we can tell that because right here, we don't actually see any data flowing through. Now this could be to a number of different issues, so we will have to actually diagnose that in our next video. If you guys want to see what the issue itself was, I will go ahead and put it at the end of this video for you. Just note that we will be doing a full diagnostics video at the end of this one. So just be aware if you're having different issues that aren't specifically related to the one I'm having right now, that you'll be able to find those in that video. Now, you know what I've just realized is this ship doesn't have the one thing that everybody seems to manage to forget, a battery. Yes, a battery. I know it's simple. I should have said this sooner in our other videos, but I totally forgot it simply needs a battery in order to run. You only need one to make it function if you're gonna have your thrusters constantly running, but you still need a battery. So let's go ahead and bolt that sucker down. We're gonna connect in our cable run it down here, right into the system. Now let's go back into test flight mode. Let's see what happens. I bet you this is gonna work. Boom, it functions. That's all we needed and now it magically works. That was the only problem we were running into with that guys. A simple, easy solution, that was it that's pretty much all there is to it. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you like the video. And if you'd like to support us, you can check out our membership program down below right underneath the video on the right side. Thank you so much for watching once again, and we'll see you next time.